Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 97, Challenges of COVID on Teens. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my confident and strong co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty well. So we kind of had an a unplanned week off last week. Uh, our weather, uh, our, our shooting schedule was, was changed up last week because we had something we were doing on the weekend. And we had to preempt our Saturday shooting schedule because of some inclement weather. And then, unfortunately, Sunday, I was not feeling so well myself, so I was not up to doing the podcast on Sunday. So we had to skip last week, so we're back after a short hiatus. So how was your last two weeks, let's say? They've been pretty well. Anything exciting going on? Well, I was accepted into the Deptford Academy I applied for yesterday. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Um, so when I go to the high school, when I go to ninth grade, they have academies there, um, academic academies, they call them. And, um, we were able to apply for them. And it's basically, I don't know too much, but I'm guessing it's like an extra class that you go to, um... And they have different top, they have, uh, different topics. Um, and I ended up going to two of the meetings, um, two of the meetings where we kind of got introduced. One was for the engineering, um, and computer science, and another was one, was for the art one. Um, and when I went to apply for the, um, academies, I had chosen, the engineering and computer science one. And yesterday was the day that you basically, like, said, they basically said if you went into the, if you got into the, if you were accepted into the academy or not, and I was. Very good. And there was probably a couple of hundred kids applying for these positions, and there's only 30 or so positions available because of how limited the, the class sizes were. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Hopefully you should enjoy that, and uh, it'll it'll get you prepped for college before you're even out of high school. Yay. Uh, so before we get started on the podcast today, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can find our audio versions of the podcast listed as Insights into Teens. The video versions of our podcast are listed as Insights into Things. You can find us anywhere you can get podcasts at this point. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Apple, uh, Amazon Music, and so forth. Uh, I would also invite folks to reach out to us and provide us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are available on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on uh, Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on Instagram. We are at insights into things, or you can reach out to us through our website at www.insightsintothings.com. So we've had discussions in the past about the effect COVID has had on schooling and stuff like that. But today I kind of wanted to talk more about, you know, we're, a year in at this point in time to when COVID really, really hit the U.S. And I kind of wanted to talk about the effects that it's having on people long term because it's one of those things where 
people that are alive today haven't had to endure something for this long with the kind of conditions we've been in. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yep, definitely. So we're going to talk about a couple of things today. We're going to talk about first, we'll look at the adverse effects of COVID on most people. Then we're going to talk about the challenges specifically facing teens and then, as usual, we'll finish with the podcast up by looking at suggestions on how to cope with these challenges. Are you ready to get into it? Sure. All right, here we go. So HealthyChildren.org tells us uh, some of the adverse effects of COVID. And this is kind of more in general terms of people in general, but obviously a focus on, on children. So the first thing they talk about is changes in mood that are not usual for your child, such as ongoing irritability, feelings of hopelessness or rage, and frequent conflicts with friends and family. Now, of those, do you feel that you've experienced any of those mood changes given the course, the extended course of our COVID isolation? I would say so. Um, I didn't. I don't normally have conflicts with you guys or my friends. Um, I do sometimes have feelings of hopelessness and rage at um, some points, and I've definitely become a more m emotional. And um, it's been harder to more or less control my emotions um, around this time, and I've been feeling. I've been feeling very different feelings, and sometimes when I do feel a feeling, I don't know why I feel it, such as sometimes when I feel fear or sadness, I don't know why I exactly feel that, and I don't exactly know what to put the blame on. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is just the fact that there's so much stuff that's building up from COVID over the, over the last year or so that there's forces that are affecting us that we're not even aware of a lot of times. Mm-hmm. They also talk about changes in behavior, such as stepping back from personal relationships. If you ordinarily, if your ordinarily outgoing teen shows little interest in texting or video chatting with their friends, for example, this might be a cause for concern. Now, prior to COVID, you had friends, you interacted with friends, and, and obviously you went to school and interacted with people at school, but you weren't a particularly outgoing i mean you were an introvert you lab you've labeled yourself as an introvert most of the time mm -hmm. do you feel that the restrictions put on us from covid have caused a change in your behavior as far as your socializing goes well i will say i'm not socializing with my friends as much as i used to um but the good thing is my friends constantly seem to message me uh which kind of keep me involved with them um, I do try to socialize with my friends at some point, and whenever I have my band lessons now, I actually, um, stay after on the Google Meet with the guys who also have, uh, the trumpet lesson, and we kind of, like, talk, see how things are going. So, I don't think it's really changed me too much on mm -hmm. that respect. Uh, that's good. I mean... I think a lot of it had to do with your, your previous socializing habits as well. Because for me, you know, I'll be the first one to admit that I'm an introvert. I'm not a particularly social individual. And the restrictions of COVID have really had little effect on that aspect of my life. You know, the people that I don't hang out with now, I wasn't hanging out with before. So it's, you know, like I kind of miss doing some of the... Uh, conventions and the, the going out to eat and stuff like that. That's some of the stuff that I miss, but that's all stuff that I do with you and mommy. Yeah. So they also talk about a loss of interest in activities previously enjoyed. Did your music loving child suddenly stop wanting to practice guitar? For example, did your aspiring chef lose interest in cooking and baking? Do you find that there's interest that you had before COVID that you just have drifted away from at this point in time? Uh, I actually 
think I'm the exact opposite in that respect because um, before COVID, I really wasn't practicing my trumpet all that much, mainly because I had to leave it at school and going to the band room while also trying to catch the bus and not going to be late. Uh, not the best way to do it. Plus, I also started kind of losing interest because I kind of got frustrated with it. But now with COVID, I'm practicing my trumpet more, I enjoy playing it, and it's no longer a challenge for me. And I've also, and my creativ- eh, my creativity aspect of myself, like, I now do digital art because of COVID, kind of. So I think I'm kind of the opposite of this problem. Yeah, and I, and I honestly think it's, it's that introvert in you who's blossomed because homeschooling, you've got a lot more free time on your hands now too because you're not in transit and your school days are a little bit different and stuff. Yeah. So I think you've been taking advantage of that for some of the creative endeavors that you like to get into. Mm-hmm. Uh, they go into talking about sleeping and they say a lot of kids have a hard time falling asleep and staying asleep or starting to sleep all the time. Now, do you... Have you found that your sleep patterns have changed in the last year or so where you're having difficulty either falling asleep or waking up or anything? I mean, yeah, I definitely have to say that before if, before COVID, I was able to sleep good. And even at the start of like the school year, I was sleeping fine. But for some reason over the break, um... When I went back to school, I just couldn't sleep. I had a hard time falling asleep. And even now, I still have some difficulty falling asleep and staying calm, which was why I need to, like, I now, like, try take, taking medicine to help me fall asleep better. I have a weighted blanket that I use to reduce stress and such. So, yeah, that aspect has kind of affected me. Yeah, and I, again, I think a lot of that has to do with some of the underlying stress, like, like you have everyday stress that you deal with, you know, homework assignments and tests that are coming up. And these are things that are in the forefront that are very obvious to you. So you're aware of those. But when you have a situation with COVID where you're in an isolation or a lockdown situation and it's a health scare and you go on for a year now or longer, there's that initial phase of stress that's in your face and that you're used to it. But in order to continue on with life, you kind of have to push that stress to the back burner a little bit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away, but it's not immediately in your face. And I think what happens is having that constant level of stress there that you're not immediately aware of is tends to have this effect of unintended consequences that, things start to happen in your life and you don't realize that that stress that's in the background is what's causing it. Mm. So I think a lot of that might be causing some of the sleep issues. And yeah, what we've done, we, we started giving you uh, not medicine, it's a dietary supplement. It's a, yeah. just melatonin, which is a chemical that your body makes normally. Um, and between that and the weighted blanket that's been recommended by you know, multiple therapists, that seems to be having a positive effect on your sleep cycles again. Mm -hmm. Changes in weight or eating problems, such as never being hungry or eating all the time is another issue. Um, have you found you've had a loss of appetite or your, your dietary habits have changed or anything like that? Um, I will say that I do sometimes have a loss of appetite, but that's kind of no I mean, I kind of feel as though it was kind of normal for me because my I have strange eating habits, I will admit. Sometimes I'm like hungry and I'll eat everything on my plate and sometimes I really only eat half. It's kind of strange and also being in the kitchen when I go to when I uh, do schoolwork, uh <laughs> you know, I kind of feel the need to snack at some point. Well, and I think that's normal because even throughout the school day, you'd wind up having, you know, some kind of nourishment, even if you're physically at school. Yeah, when we were actually talking about health and we actually had a talk about weight um, and such and body image, um, 
they said that it's normal for teens to ne- eat more because they need their bodies need the energy at, as they grow. So absolutely, and that, and the you know the one thing that you'll notice is your body will go through growth spurts where you'll be very hungry and you won't be able to quench that appetite, and that'll usually be followed by the aches and pains in the joints as your body is going through these growth spurts and, you know, your ligaments are getting tugged as your bones grow and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's, it's normal. Um, Hopefully it's not uh, an overriding issue. That's a factor of, of COVID. So the next thing they talk about is problems with memory, thinking and concentration. Do you find you're having a difficult time, especially with class or with assignments where you have to sit down and actually, you know, burn the brain cells to actually get some work done. Do you find trouble concentrating on or focusing on the work? Well, for the most part, no. But when I come across a problem I don't entirely understand, um, I kind of lose the concentration and start feeling anxiety. Like, I don't know how to solve this problem. What am I going to do? And I kind of start freaking out and... Then I kind of lose a bunch of concentration and I really can't focus on the rest until I calm down. Yeah. And, and that's a self fulfilling stress almost at that point in time, because as you start losing that focus because of stress, you start to stress about that loss of focus. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those things you you really need to keep an eye on and, and keep it under control. This leads us to the next one. And that's, less interest in schoolwork or a drop in academic effort. Now, we know that's not the case with you because of the grades you're you're pulling in. But do you foresee that possibly being something that your friends might be running into or has it ever had an effect on you at any point in time during this crisis? I mean, I could definitely see some of my friends eventually losing interest, not because, like, they don't like school, but because of COVID and the long term. The long term of going through all of this for a year now. Um, and I guess there were some moments where I started having a little less interest in schoolwork. Um, but I still, um, but eventually, but my anxiety actually kind of kept my interest in schoolwork because it's like, you need to do this now, 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 or else you're not going to get a good grade. And I guess my anxiety kind of kept me up with school. That's, that's kind of ironic that we're depending on anxiety to, to drive us in our schoolwork here. Yeah. The next thing they talk about is changes in appearance, such as a lack of basic personal hygiene within reason, since uh, many are doing slightly less grooming during this time at home. So you're, you're working, you're schooling from home. Uh, mommy is working from home. So there's no pressure to really get that shower every day or get, you know, get dressed up every day as if you're going into school or something like that. Do you find that lack of need for personal hygiene at that same level is a factoring you not keeping up with personal hygiene or do you are you sticking with the same schedule that you normally would have i mean i'm trying to stick with the same schedule um um one of my biggest like i definitely at the start of all of this i looked like a hot mess my hair was never done i always stayed in my pajamas and yeah but i still took my showers um every other day so um, I was still trying to keep up hygiene, and then when school started up, I kind of wanted to get into more of a routine. They also said, like, hey, maybe you should dress up and not wear pants, even though, and not, like, and not wear, like, pajama pants, that stuff like that, um, because of the video chats, even though no one actually shows their face. Um, and I mainly just wanted to keep up my, um, uh, I wanted to keep a cleaned up look because for some reason I never like it when my hair is messy and I find regular clothes to be really comfortable. Well, that's good. I mean, I I think it's kind of important that you stick to those routines um, for no other reason than just out of personal habit at that point. Mm -hmm. So the next thing they talk about, again, is something I don't think really necessarily applies to you, and that's an increase in risky or reckless behavior 
And they cite using drugs or alcohol here. Now, I know you don't use either of those. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you're, you're quite militant against mommy or I using, uh, having a drink at all. Um, but do you find yourself doing other behavior, like maybe putting off school assignments that you normally would have jumped on or anything that's kind of uncharacteristic of the of the type of behavior you normally would, would do that would be considered risky or out of character? Um, not necessarily. Like, sometimes I do have off days where something might happen, but I can't exactly cite specific examples. Um, right now, but I do think sometimes I do have uncharacteristic moments. I just can't name any. Okay, fair enough. And the last one that they talk about here is one that I kind of have to preface by saying, you know, this is one that is a significant um, mental illness, is a significant concern that's been a byproduct of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And it's one that we're not qualified to really discuss or, or offer advice on. So if you are feeling thoughts of death or suicide, um, it's something you should definitely talk to professionals about. There's, there's a lot of help out there to help folks who feel that way and get through these difficult times. With that in mind, have you had any severe or significant thoughts along those lines or a, a feeling of helplessness or, you know, doom and gloom or anything like that that could lead to that type of, those types of thoughts? Um, I've tried not to. I try to remain as positive as I can, um, especially now. Um, I definitely used to be pretty negative, but never to this extent, just like kind of you know, pouty, I don't really like stuff, that kind of thing. And I've tried to have a slightly more optimistic outlook, and especially now, I'm trying to be as optimistic as I can. Um, and I never really try to dwell on this kind of stuff, and I've never really thought of these kind of dark thing, dark ideas. So, yeah. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that you've not reach that point and hopefully you never do mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people out there that the stress and the the worry of the situation can be overwhelming to people so in situations like that we definitely urge you to you know reach out and, and seek professional help uh, sometimes just just the ability to talk to somebody makes a difference mm -hmm. so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we'll talk about the challenges teens face during COVID. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We're talking challenges of COVID on teens. And now we're going to take a few minutes to talk about specific challenges that teens face. And this information comes to us from the Centers for Disease Control. So the first thing they talk about is changes in routines. In addition to everyday steps to prevent COVID-19, physical or social distancing is one of the best tools we have to avoid being exposed to the virus and to slow its spread. 
However, having to physically distance from someone you love, like friends, a boyfriend or girlfriend, family, or your worship community can be hard. Adolescents may struggle when asked to change their social routines, from choosing to skip in-person gatherings to consistently wearing masks in public settings. It's important for adults to help adolescents take personal responsibility to protect themselves and others, as well as support them in safely taking time to connect with friends and family remotely. So with that in mind, let me ask you, what steps do you take, or do you take any steps, to stay in contact with your friends and your family? Um, well... Technology is a wonderful thing, and I have, and I have a lot of my friends and family, um, that I can text. And sometimes when we, when it's, when we have a major holiday like Thanksgiving, um, our family will have a Zoom call where all of us get together and, um, we're able to see each other and talk to each other. Nice. So that, that, kind of helps to bind us together at that point in time so that we don't lose touch with each other you know you don't you don't have that advantage of physically being together but at least you know you can still share experiences with each other the next thing that they talk about that's a challenge is the breaking continuity of learning School closures due to COVID-19 have meant that adolescents have been participating in learning from home, which you have. Mm -hmm. Online platforms and communities have become essential as families turn to digital solutions more than ever to support students' learning. Now, you guys have, what, two or three different online platforms that you use right now for your, your schooling? Mm hmm Unfortunately, the immediate need for virtual learning environments brought to light inequity in resources, access, and connectivity across families and communities. So you had some kids who didn't have computers or tablets or laptops. Um, <clears throat> you have some communities that don't even have internet access. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've been very fortunate in that We've always been kind of a technology-centric household here, so it's not had that much of an effect on us. Yeah. School closures have also meant a break in access to some essential developmental services like occupational behavioral speech therapy, so some of the special needs kids. Um, one of the uh, gentlemen that worked for me has a, a student who is dyslexic, so he requires additional assistance and some of his reading stuff, and, and that, that's been kind of a struggle for him. It could also have impeded continuity in adolescents' development of athletic or hands-on vocational skills with potential impacts on their higher education and professional future. So in this case, you've got kids who are athletes and look to get scholarships to colleges that will help them pay for college and you know, with no sports going on, that's not happening. So that's another difficulty. It's important to understand how virtual learning could make learning increasingly challenging for students with limited resources or special needs. Moreover, some children may experience anxiety about going back to school in person or virtually. Do you have any anxiety about the thought of going back to school? You know, Joe Biden came into office, and one of the things that he's trying to push at this point is to get everyone back in school five days a week. Is that something that you have concerns about? I mean, kind of. Um, I I know that I'm more like children aren't entirely the main demographic who do get COVID. Um, but I'm not entirely worried about my safety. I'm more or less worried about you and mommy. You're what, um, you being diabetic, you're, you have a higher chance of getting COVID and I don't want to have to, um, put you at risk. So going into school five days a week would kind of be scary for me, which is why for now I'm fully remote. I don't go into school two days of the week. I just do remote. Right. 
Yeah, very good point. Uh, some may also experience fatigue from online video conferencing, commonly referred to as Zoom fatigue. Now, I can tell you, given the number of video conferences that I've been doing at work as opposed to in-person meetings, um, I'm to the point where I'm very paranoid and probably overly cautious at work where if one of my colleagues who's physically in the same office as me wants to have a meeting, I'll schedule a, a, a video conference with them and they may be, you know, four desks down from me because I don't want to be in a confined space with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I notice a lot of what you're doing in school is video conferencing with your teacher and interactions with assignments and stuff like that. Do you find that that's becoming troublesome for you? Is it is it difficult to continue working under those conditions, or do you find it okay to, to work like that? Honestly, I'm kind of already getting used to it, and I think that when I do go back into school, I'm not entirely going to be used to it because I know, like, I have to stay on the conference for the entire class period. They ask me questions, I answer them, and I'm – and for – of course, my band lessons, we all see each other, and I'm able to interact with them slightly more than with my other teachers. Nice. Well, it seems like it's working out pretty well for you. Mm -hmm. The next thing, the next challenge they talk about is a break in continuity of health care. Parents may have avoided seeking health care for their adolescents due to stay-at-home orders and may continue to do so because they're afraid of getting sick with COVID-19. I know I'm avoiding a number of medical uh, procedures or evaluations that I should be going for that aren't essential. They're kind of inconveniences right now because I just don't want to go through the exposure. Mm. Have um, mommy and daddy prevented you or, or cut down the number of appointments you normally would have gone to? Because I know we've got the – the orthodontist for the braces, you've got regular annual checkups. Has mommy been keeping that schedule or has she been reserved in what she's doing with that? Well, I go to the orthodontist once a month, so that isn't being cut. I'm actually going to be going to the dentist in a few days, so that's not cut. Um, I definitely don't think I've gone to the doctor as much. I don't remember too many times I've gone to the doctor. In fact, when I went to get my flu shot, I didn't actually go to a doctor. I went, uh, to a, we went to a pharmacy to get our flu shots, so. So, so it's not really impeding your, um, uh, medical care at this point in time. Not really. Well, they talk about the fact that school closures have impacted many adolescents' ability to receive mental health, speech therapy, and occupational health services on campus. Um, were you talking to your guidance counselor a lot, or were you seeing the nurse, or were, were you getting any kind of these medical services from school? Well, I mean, besides the usual check, besides the, like when they called you into the office to kind of get to know you. I really didn't do that. If I was having any problems, I'd mainly go to you guys for it. Um, and I guess that was just because, like, I felt as though I needed to, um, you know, I needed to you stay in school. I needed to stay in the class. Um, and my mental, and my mental health wasn't, like extremely bad to the point where I needed to go to the guidance counselor. So well, that's good. So they kind of summarize this by saying it's important to ensure adolescents receive continuity of health care, including continuing mental health, occupational and speech therapies, such as via telehealth appointments. And that's what my endocrinologist has switched over to is telehealth, where we do a FaceTime chat or something like that. Now, um, you still need to receive vaccines, including the COVID-19 vaccine when you're eligible for it. Um, so there's still meant, there's still physical health things where you still need to interact with a doctor at some point in time. And, you know, it's important that parents are very cognizant of that and don't let that fall by the wayside. Uh, the next thing they talk about is missed significant life events. And this is impacting a lot of people. 
So physical distancing can feel as if one is placing life on hold, and doing that for a year is a real burden. Mm -hmm. The truth is that the clock keeps ticking. Birthdays, graduations, proms, homecoming, vacation plans, births, and all more significant funerals are just a sample of the many significant life events that adolescents have missed experiencing during COVID-19. Social distancing, stay-at-home orders, and limits to gatherings have affected their ability to gather in person with friends and family to celebrate or grieve in typical ways. Grief is a normal response to losing someone or something important to you. It's important for your family and friends to help adolescents find alternate, creative, and safe ways to connect and support each other at a distance. We had a death in the family um, during this this time period. We lost uh, Dorian, one of our cats, and it was one of those things where we didn't have the ability to to reach out and to have that closure with our other family members that we would normally get that support. We had to get it through telehealth. Um, there, are, there are people who are losing family members as a result of COVID-19. There are normal deaths that are happening. But more importantly, there's, there's planned events that are happening. Graduations. You know, I have a friend of mine who lives out in Wisconsin, and her son graduated high school, and he couldn't walk with his class, and he had to come up with some kind of compromise for that. And that's one of those once-in-a-lifetime things that you, you can't relive. You know, They didn't have a prom because of COVID. Uh, there are people that are putting their weddings off, or they're having online weddings. So what I find during this time period is how creative people can be, but what impact do you think not being able to do these routine things is having on people? Like, how, how did it affect you not being able to, to have friends and family comfort you when we lost Dorian? Well. And I didn't make, mean to make you cry. Sorry, I threw that one out there. That was not what the original intent was with, with that <laughs> question. It's fine. I will say it was difficult yeah and the fact we lost her pretty early on in all of this was really not helping no and um the fact i really couldn't like get a hug from my other family members kind of hurt yeah what about from school events? Like, like, you know, I don't know, concerts, for instance. And, you know, that's one of the things that you would normally be participating in, being a member of the band. And you guys practice, you know, you put a lot of hard work into practice. You improve your skills. You learn your, your songs and stuff. And ultimately, the culmination of all that effort is you get to put on a show for friends and family. And you've not been able to do that. How has that affected you? in this situation i mean i did get my one the one winter concert from seventh grade which was probably the most sophisticated concert i've ever had and it was a really big shock and um i actually really liked playing the spring songs we were planning to have um when we were going to have our spring concert but then COVID hit and we really couldn't do that um, and I mean, it was kind of going, I was really kind of missing out on it because ever since I started in fourth grade, I've had some type of concert. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's, again, it's, it's not a major life event, but it's one of those milestones that you kind of get to celebrate your achievements at that point, And we were missing out on those. Yeah. So the next thing and, and the last thing on this, um, uh, subject that they talk about is a loss of security and safety job loss and lost wages affected the household income of many adolescents families during COVID-19 we've been very lucky mm -hmm. mommy has been able to work from home her company has been very accommodating for that um, I've not had an impact on my job my my um, owner of our company 
um, has been able to keep the company going at normal rate, basically. Um, so I've been very fortunate that I've not lost my job and I still have a, a job to go into and, and things are, are, are doing well there. Um, but there's a lot of Americans out there who aren't that fortunate. You know, we saw some of the highest unemployment rates since the Great Depression. Economic insecurity is consistently linked to adverse development, academic achievement, and health outcomes. It may affect adolescents' ability to consistently access healthy foods, safe transportation, and housing. Mounting economic stressors can increase the risk for exposure to violence as as families um, experience money issues, those money issues can lead to arguments and stress and violence at home at times. Along with stay-at-home orders during COVID-19, some adolescents may have been increasingly exposed to abuse and neglect, intimate partner violence at home, or even, God forbid, sexual violence. Their increased online activity also puts them at risk for online harms, such as online sexual exploitation, cyberbullying, online risk, risk-taking behavior, and exposure to potentially harmful content. Um, how have you felt, because again, it hasn't had much impact on us from a financial standpoint other than the fact that mommy is home with you. How has everything is from a COVID standpoint affected you from a security standpoint? Do you feel we're financially uh, stable? Do you see that there's stress between mommy and I? Do you see anything uh, impacting our family that could be a result of this loss of safety and security they talk about? Well, I have to say I'm one of the fortunate ones where you guys interact on a very loving and kind level and you two are never really upset or angry at each other and there's never really any violence that goes on in our house um and i haven't really seen a change in that the only thing is that i mean me and mommy have started getting a little closer and i guess that since you still have to leave the house we're still I definitely don't spend as much time as I want to with you, um, but uh, you go into work, so I really, it was kind of like it was before, but now that I'm kind of used to having mommy, um, I definitely feel that we don't really spend too much time with you anymore, but um, we definitely try to do it, especially over the weekends, and of course with the podcast. Right, right. Well, yeah, we, we are... On many levels, we're very fortunate. Uh, There are a lot of families out there who are far more affected by the consequences of COVID than we have been. So I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to take another quick break, and we're going to talk about uh, some suggestions on how to cope with the stress of COVID when we come back. All righty. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. We are talking about the challenges of COVID-19 on teens, and we have some suggestions from UNICEF, the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, 
on suggestions on how to cope with the stress of COVID. So the first thing they talk about is recognize that your anxiety is completely normal. If school closures and alarming headlines are making you feel anxious, you're not the only one. In fact, that's how you're supposed to feel. Psychologists have long recognized that anxiety is a normal and healthy function that alerts us to threats and helps us to take measures to protect ourselves. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Um, the one show that me and Mommy had been watching um, called Brain Games, they mentioned how um, anxiety is normal and it was a behavior that um, we've had since we knew about threats to our safety and that it's a completely normal and healthy function and it's fine to feel scared. Yes, your anxiety is going to help you make the decisions that you need to be making right now. Not spending time with other people or in large groups, washing your hands, not touching your face, all the stuff that the CDC has told us. Those feelings are helping to keep not only you safe, but others as well, like you alluded to. If you go to school and maybe you don't get sick from COVID, but you become a carrier and bring it home, mommy or I could get seriously ill from it. Mm -hmm. This is also how we take care of members of our community. We think about the people around us, too. While anxiety around COVID-19 is completely understandable, make sure that you're using reliable sources, such as UNICEF's World Health Organization sites, to get information. And I think this is very important. You know, we started out this crisis under one administration that was less scientifically centric than it probably should have been. And as a result, there was a lot of information that was put out there that was at best not helpful and at worst detrimental. Since the shift in administrations in January, uh, I think we're moving back down the right path of a more scientific approach to it. Um, Organizations like the World Health Organization are, are getting the credit that they deserve at this point in time. And it's important that when you address these things with your kids, that you do it from a factual standpoint. And there is more than enough credible sources out there from which to draw on to have the conversation. And it's important to have that conversation with your kids so that the kids themselves understand the problem understand how to deal with it, and realize that it's not doom and gloom. You know, it's a serious issue that needs to be dealt with. It's being dealt with, and it will continue to be dealt with smartly. And as long as you do that, that's the best that you can do. The next thing they talk about is to create distractions. When we're under chronically difficult conditions, it's very helpful to divide the problem into two categories things I can do something about, and then things I can't do anything about. There's a lot that falls under the second category right now, and that's okay. But one thing that helps us to deal with that is creating distractions for ourselves. For instance, doing homework. You know, one of the things that you are, I would say, famous for, at least in our household, is pouring yourself into your schoolwork. And, and when you do that, that tends to shut down the, the concerns for the outside world while you're focusing on that. Would you agree? Yeah. I usually um, try to put as much time into my schoolwork as I need it, as I need. Um, I, need I make sure to check my work whenever I do it, and I make sure to study for quizzes and tests. Yeah. Watching a favorite movie. You know, we've had a number of... Uh, you know, movie theaters are closed down at this point in time. So a lot of first run movies are coming out on streaming services. We've had a number of family movie nights where we've watched Wonder Woman and, and things of that nature. You have your, your evenings with mommy where you're watching shows and stuff like that. Do you find that's a helpful distraction for you? Has that helped you to alleviate some of your anxiety? Yeah, especially, like, since I do it before bed, it helps me kind of get, like, calm down. It 
I stopped thinking about, like, all the stuff that happened in the day that stressed me out, and I started feeling calm. Yeah, and that's a great way to start into that phase there. Um, and I tend to follow that up by getting into bed with a novel. That's the next thing they talk about. Um, I like to read before I go to bed. It helps to tire me out. It helps to clear my mind. I know that's not a method that works for you, but it's certainly something that could work for someone else. Well, I mean, sometimes when I read something, it does kind of put me to sleep, but I haven't done that in a while. Right. The other thing that, that um, we do from time to time as well is playing games together. You know, we play board games, we'll play rock band, or you and I will play video games together. Um, do you find that to be a good de-stressor? Yeah, and although I sometimes play games on my own, I definitely enjoy playing games with you because, like, sometimes when I play Minecraft, it kind of feels lonely when I'm the only one playing, and, like, when you and I play Call of Duty, um, we... It's fun because we have interactions, and it's like, oh, no, and, like, we right. kind of work off of each other. Right. They also talk about writing in a journal. Now, I know you do that... Um frequently for your ELA class in school, but do you find that to be helpful or meditative at all? I mean, sometimes. We do talk about pretty deep subjects. Um, the last time was kindness and if we think we're kind and, some, and stuff like that. Um, and I do find it to be calming. I also know that Mommy has a journal or two she writes in before bed. Um, so, yeah, writing in a journal does help. Yeah. The next thing they talk about is finding new ways to connect with your friends. If you want to spend time with friends while you're practicing physical distancing, social media is a great way to connect. Now, you just recently started connecting with friends from your band class. Tell us about that a little bit. So, basically, my te my band teacher, we had used to use this one um, conferencing site that most of my teachers had used. And basically, uh, the problem with it was that when we were trying to show our faces, because with my band lesson, the it was the only time when we showed our faces and unmuted ourselves to talk. Um, and since it was, and the the problem with it was that we could only see our face and the teacher's face. Um, so we tried Google Meet, which um, allowed all of us to see our each other's faces and what was going on. Um, and then the last two lessons we had, um, one of the kids suggested that, hey, why don't we stay after to just, you know, chat? And after the teacher left, we all kind of chatted, and it was really kind of nice. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. That's, you know, using the technology to your advantage there. Mm-hmm. And the last thing they talk about is focus on you. Have you been wanting to learn how to do something new, start a new book, or spend time practicing a musical instrument? Now's the time to do that. Focusing on yourself and finding ways to use your newfound time is a productive way to look after your mental health. Try making a list of the books you want to read and the things that you've been meaning to do. Then start knocking them out one thing at a time to show yourself making progress. Have you been able to take advantage of any of the time that you've had to do stuff that you've been wanting to do? Yeah, um, I definitely think one of the major things that's been going on is that I've been actually ah. I've been exercising a bit more. Um, um, that's mainly due to my one school assignment in uh, physical education where it's like uh, we had to do a fitness log where we basically did an exercise for 30 minutes and each day and then by the end we made a summary and doing so we actually got uh the new just dance um for our apple tv and um even so and sometimes when i don't actually have schoolwork i just do it to you know dance a bit and it kind of i kind of have a secret passion for dancing um and I also really like listening to music, so... You, you just announced it on a podcast, so it's not secret anymore. I know. <laughs> but, yeah, I, um, I like listening to music, and sometimes when I actually listen to music and don't have Just Dance on, I kind of move around, and when Mommy walks in, it's kind of awkward, like, 
Oh, hi, mommy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, kind of awkward. So. Nothing, nothing wrong with that, sweetheart. Yeah. So that was all we had to talk about today. Uh, you know, just kind of a, a, a check in here to see how things are going with you and with the audience and some suggestions on what to look out for, how to deal with some of these things. And, and hopefully um, some folks will find it useful and, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. We're certainly moving in the right direction. Infection rates are dropping now that more vaccines are going out. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be out of this in uh, in a few months now and we can start going back to whatever the new normal is going to be. Mm-hmm. So we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your final thoughts and then we'll finish up the business of the podcast. Go for your closing remarks. Okay, so to everyone out there, You are more than likely facing one of these challenges. If not, you're facing some other challenge. And just know that whatever you're feeling is completely normal. And it's it's going to be all right. We're going to make it out of this. Try to remain positive and try to use some of the coping mechanisms we have. And if none of these work, try to look up some if you can. Okay. I think that is uh, some sage advice as normal from you. Thank you. Before we go, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. Again, if you want the audio versions of our podcast, you can find us listed under Insights into Teens. If you want the video versions of our podcast, you can find us as Insights into Things. And we're available on all major podcast networks. Uh, We would also invite folks to reach out to us and give us your feedback Uh, Give us some suggestions for uh, show topics. Um, We're struggling right now with topics. We've talked about so many things coming up to our 100th episode here. So any input people have on things you'd like us to address would be appreciated. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter, we are at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We stream six days a week uh, when I'm not having technical difficulties like I was this week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Side note there, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free Twitch Prime subscription. We'd love it if you throw that our way. It helps us out tremendously. Audio versions of the podcast can be found at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. On Facebook, we're at facebook.com slash podcast. You can get us on Instagram at insightsintothings, or you can get links to all those things at our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you... And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Well done. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>